I wrote a paper that was uh, called What's Going On? The Question of Time Trends in Autism, and this is a, a chart uh, from that paper, which basically shows that when people started doing autism prevalence studies, uh, they started kind of the earliest birth cohorts. Nobody ever bothered to do a systematic prevalence study in the 30s and 40s. But in the 60s, they started looking back to children born in the 50s, and there were just a handful of studies in the UK. But then over you know, the course of several decades, they generally measured the level of autism, which was generally pretty low, four or five per 10,000, or if you like to do it the other way, one in 2,000 or one in 2,500. Um, and that was, the, that was kind of what autism was. That was the frequency. It was rare, tragic, but it was constant. The rates were predictable and predictably low. But then, in birth cohorts born around you know, 1990, it was sort of a before and after thing. Before 1990, the rates were really low. And then all of a sudden, in birth cohorts born af after 1990, uh, something started to happen. I had an interesting exercise in uh, 2005. I went to a, a presentation by a CDC epidemiologist in the North Shore of Boston. And, she was giving a talk on the epidemiology of autism. And she said, you know, about 10 years ago, we first began to hear reports that there were more kids with autism. So that would have been 1995. Um, and so I raised my hand and said, well, what'd you do about it? <laughs> she didn't have a good answer. <laughs> she didn't like me very much either. But, but actually, around 1995, the mid-90s, people began to notice this. Children born uh, in the U.S. around 1991, 92, that's when the rates all of a sudden started to be higher. Those children were diagnosed in 1995, so the first signals were getting picked up in the mid-1990s. The most interesting one and the most interesting story about what the C so, and so the, it's an interesting question. What did the CDC, it's the question I posed to this woman, what did the CDC do about it? Well, it's a very interesting story what they did about it, um, because the first signal that they really picked up was in New Jersey. I'm a New Jersey boy. I grew up in Princeton, uh, so I, you know, I, I'm always interested in New Jersey stories. Uh, but Brick, New Jersey, was the first really strong signal of autism, and it didn't come from public health professionals. It came from a mom, uh, Bobby Gallagher, pictured here uh, with one of her autistic children, uh, had a daughter uh, who was autistic, and then had a son uh, a couple of years later, and both were autistic, and she. Uh, was worried because she'd never heard of autism and she looked around and it seemed that in her circles a number of the young children, the three or four year olds, this was in 1997, uh, there were a number of three or four year olds with autism but n no one older. So she asked the logical question living in New Jersey, you know, is there something polluted? Is there something in the water? Is there some chemical toxin that's causing a cluster of autism cases? So. She went to um, uh, local health officials. She went to, there was an autism group. Everyone got interested. She went to her congressman. Uh, everyone started organizing. They had meetings in Washington. Uh, she thought she was going to have to push. Uh, but one day in April of 1998, um, she remembers that it was April Fool's Day, she went to her congressman's office. And the CDC was there. And they were there with a team. And they wanted to go and descend on brick and figure out what was going on. They figured out they, they might have a clue, you know, to the causes of autism. Uh, and so they they started and they you know and starting in uh, the fall of 1998, they diagnosed every kid in all of Brick Township. And sure enough, uh, there were a lot of autistic kids in Brick Township. And so they confirmed this uh, in January of 1999. Uh, they had a press conference, and one of the epidemiologists said, "I believe there's a cluster." but we don't know what's causing it, and we need to find out. That was the last word that ever came from the CDC. Uh, no one knows exactly what happened, but all of a sudden they went silent. The parents never heard anything until, um, uh, I'm into, Jan that was January of 1999, about a year and a half later, kind of early 2000, uh, a paper came out uh, that described, that reported their results. Uh, and this, uh, is what they wrote. They, they broke down full syndrome autism, PDD slash autistic disorder, uh, on the one hand, and they had also, they included PDD, NOS, and Asperger's as well in their scan. Uh, and they reported the rate of autism uh, in the population by the age of the child. 
uh, and those are the horizontal bars. Um, uh, and, as you, and they then reported the confidence intervals, those are the red bars, and they, they described in the paper that age-specific rates were calculated, confidence intervals for the two groups overlapped, that means the red bar and the red bar are not different from each other, indicating that prevalence rates for the two groups were not different. There was no trend. That was their official line. And they're still kind of sticking to it. Well, some of us, some of you may know Sally Bernard is a friend of mine uh, at Safe Minds, friend of Katie's. Um, she wrote the woman who I had talked uh, to in actually North Shore, Marshall and Jurgen Alsop, said, hey, can we get the data? Can we get the data by birth year? It would be interesting to know, because you kind of group these two things together, it would be interesting to know what the data looks by birth year. And it, for God knows what reason, uh, the CDC sent Sally the data. And here it is. And so what they've effectively done, the, the, the public, and this is just autistic disorder, because they just sent us the autistic data. Uh, so the bright yellow lines are the published data, and the dotted lines are the data that they gave us. And what's fascinating is that, and, I, and if you do one thing, instead of taking the birth years, you convert the, the age of the child, you convert that to a, a, a year of birth, which you can do, because all of this was cut off as of 19, December 31st, 1998. That was the age we cut off. The 9 to 10-year-olds, there were zero cases of autism. As Bobby Gallagher had figured out, and these kids had aged until they, when they were three or four, they, they became four, five, and six. There were a lot of kids who were you know, born in 1992, 93. And then there were a few less of the three-year-olds. But as one thing I've learned, I've learned in the course of doing epi studies, three-year-olds missed screens. Uh, the average age of diagnosis is about four, at the time, was four and a half years old. And so anytime you do a survey and you're including three-year-olds, you're going to miss some because the parents haven't gotten them into the early intervention. There's, a, there's just under ascertaining a three-year-old, so that's a bad signal. So effectively what they did, and interestingly they, uh, well, the second, the, what they did in these two averages, they took these age ranges, the, the six to the 10-year-olds, and they averaged zero and the peak. And they got a number in the middle. And then for the three to five-year-olds, they started with a peak, and then they got the, the three-year-olds averaged in. And so that average was higher than the, the older kids. But it wasn't enough to be statistically significant. Barely. They did little tricky things. Like you notice the older kids, there are more kids than there are younger kids. It's an unequal sample. Statistically, that's the wrong thing to do. You ought to have simple numbers. You could do four to 10-year-olds. And then you could divide the, the sample into equal groups. If you run it that way, the differences are statistically significant. So just about, if, if you compare the four and five year olds to the nine and 10 year olds, 99.99% confidence. You had to work really hard to come up with a way to say that there was no trend in this data.